Hello everyone, today I'll be talking about how to become an Ethereum smart contract engineer in 2021. I'll talk about should you become one or not, what kind of tasks you'll be doing, and then I'll talk about job hunting, where to look for jobs, and what kind of skills are required to be a good candidate. And then I'll talk about the skills that you need. And lastly, I'll talk about how to stay up to date. Alright, so first of all, should you become one or not? As a smart contract engineer, I think there are three parts to this job. Smart contract, front end work, and back end work. For the smart contract part, you'll be asked to design protocols, governance, and incentive structures. For example, you might be asked to design a smart contract protocol for lending. Or you might be asked to design a governance token. Or design a token that incentivizes the users to use your protocol. Another task that you'll be doing is to write contracts that interact with other contracts on the mainnet. And in 2021, this will probably mostly be with DeFi contracts. As part of this job, you'll also have to keep up with the latest hacks. Every time there is a new hack, you'll have to double check that your contract is safe from the hack. The other part of this job might be to audit other smart contracts. But I don't have any experience on this. So I'll leave it at that. For the front end part, you'll probably have to write some user interface to the smart contract. And this could be both internal and for the end users. For the back end, some common tasks are to write a bot that interacts with the smart contract, write some script that monitors and alerts. So for example, every time there is a ERC20 transfer, you might log the event and also send an email alert if the amount that was transferred was really big. Another common task is data aggregation. For example, you might have to query the blockchain on every block and save the results into a database. So these are the common tasks that you'll be doing as a smart contract engineer. What are the pros and cons of being one? The benefit of being a smart contract engineer is that this is a revolutionary technology. For the first time, we are able to write programmable money and no other programming language can do this. So it's really exciting to be in this cutting edge industry. Another fun part about being a smart contract engineer is that you'll learn a lot. And this is because blockchain, cryptocurrency, and crypto economics combines many disciplines into one. So you'll learn about computer science, cryptography, security, economics, finance, and game theory. Another good thing about this job is that this job is in high demand. And personally, I think this career is here to stay. And because this job is in high demand, companies are looking worldwide for talents. So there are a lot of remote opportunities. With that being said, what are the cons of this job? What are the bad parts about this job? I think that this job is high stress. I think you'll experience more stress than your average software job. And this is because millions of dollars can be secured by your code. Similar to other software engineering jobs, this is not a 9 to 5 job. You have to put in extra hours outside of your 9 to 5 in order to learn about new skills and techniques. So keeping up with the industry trends. And this part is common to software engineering jobs. Now for smart contract engineers, in addition to this not to 9 to 5 job, you'll also have to keep an eye on the latest hacks. So as mentioned earlier, every time there's a hack, you'll have to double check that your smart contract is secure from the hack. So do you think you want to give it a try? Become a smart contract engineer? Well then you'll have to look for a job. And where would you look for a job? Personally, I use these websites over here. AngelList, Cryptocurrency Jobs, Crypto Jobs List, and also Twitter. Out of these websites and links, Twitter gives the latest job opportunities. So if you follow the big players in Ethereum on Twitter, then you'll see them mentioning that they're hiring for developers. So Twitter is the place to get the latest job opportunities. And out of these three websites, I think AngelList provides the most visibility into the job opportunity. 
What I mean here is that job opportunities on AngelList usually provide a salary range. They also provide basic information about the company, the size of the company, and also about investment rounds. So I think they provide the most comprehensive view into the company and also into the job opportunity. And looking at the job opportunities listed on these websites, here is the impression that I get. The job opportunities are for smart contract, front end, back end engineers, and there's also some job opportunities for security engineers. So as an auditor of the smart contract. The jobs that I saw were mostly in North America and Europe, and they are open to remote roles, but most of these remote opportunities are restricted to these regions. The salary range that I saw were around 80K on the low end, and on the high end, I saw around like 150K. These jobs require to be a mid to senior engineer. So this means that two to five years experience in software. On top of that, most companies would like to see two plus years experience in Solidity. And since DeFi experience is in demand right now, a lot of these job opportunities will mention that if you have DeFi experience, then it is a bonus. And lastly, I'm sorry to say that I saw no job opportunities for junior engineers. So as a junior engineer, if you want to become a smart contract engineer, then my advice for you is to get a software engineering job, get some two to five years experience, while also getting some experience using Solidity and other blockchain technologies. So these are the qualifications that I saw. Next, I want to talk about the skills that you're going to need. The first skill that you're going to need is some problem solving skills. And this is a common skill that is required for all software engineers. I think if you can solve the easy to medium algorithm problems, then you're good to go. Personally, I practiced my problem solving skills using algoexpert.io and leakcode.com. And make sure that you can solve the easy to the medium problems. For the front end skill, you're going to need to know some JavaScript or TypeScript and some experience using a UI framework like React or Vue. You also need some experience working with Web3 on the front end and also MetaMask. For the back end, you'll need to know either Node.js or Python. Here I'm saying Node.js or Python and not other back end language because these two languages have a good support for Web3. For the back end, another skill that you're going to need is some experience with database. MySQL, Postgres, MongoDB, etc. doesn't really matter. For the smart contract, you'll need to know Solidity. Viper is nice to have, but if I had to choose one, I would definitely choose Solidity. You'll need to be familiar with a testing and deployment framework, such as Truffle, Waffle, Hardhat, Brownie. And if I had to choose one from here, I would just pick with Truffle. This is the oldest framework and it's used by many companies. It has a lot of online resources, so I think you'll be most productive using Truffle. Again, you'll need to know how to use Web3. They have good documentation, so this shouldn't be a problem at all. You'll need to know how to use the Ganache local blockchain. I also think that in 2021, you also need to know how to set up a mainnet fork and then run some tests on it. The reason why I say this is because a lot of the smart contracts are only available on mainnet. So if you're writing a smart contract that interacts with other smart contract on the mainnet, then you'll have to know how to fork Ganache on the mainnet and then run some tests. So let's say that you learn Solidity and how do you know if you know enough Solidity? Well, the one basic test that I will ask myself is, can I write my own multisig wallet? If you can, then you have enough basic Solidity skills. I say multi-sig wallet here because being able to write a multi-sig wallet will test your understanding of key concepts in smart contracts. You also need to know how to use the open Zeppelin contracts. This will only help you be more productive. So if you have never used it, then I highly recommend that you give it a go. You'll need to be able to write contracts that interact with other contracts on the mainnet so you'll need a solid understanding of ERC-20. Being able to create your own ERC-20 using Open Zeppelin contracts and knowing how to transfer ERC tokens 
from an address to another address. Some experience with DeFi will be nice to have. Some big players in DeFi are Uniswap, Curb, Compound, and Aave. They all have good documentation, so give them a try. You'll need basic knowledge of some hacks. So for example, reentrancy and execution of user code. And you should also study the recent DeFi hacks. And when you're writing smart contracts, make sure that your contract is not vulnerable to flash shown and price manipulations. The one security tool that you should learn is Slither. It will take you like an hour to learn and another hour to integrate into your project. The benefit of using Slither in your smart contract is big. It will be able to catch a lot of these security exploits that you may have missed. Echidna is a fuzzer. Basically, it will test your smart contract with random inputs and try to break some tests. This is a nice to have skill, but it is not required. The reason why I say it is not required is because it's really hard to test your smart contract when it integrates with some smart contract on the mainnet. And for the same reason, Manticore is a skill nice to have, but I say it is not a must skill that you need to learn. So for smart contract skills, learn Solidity, pick a testing deployment framework, know how to test against the mainnet fork, be able to use open Zeppelin contracts, and integrate Slither into your smart contract projects. To have companies interested in you, you should have an online presence. So this means that you should publish your work. Have a GitHub account and publish your code on a regular basis. You should also publish your work either on a blog, YouTube, or Twitter. And also have a LinkedIn with your resume. Having an online presence will only increase your chance of getting that job you want. So I highly recommend this activity. The last thing that I want to talk about in this video is how to stay up to date. The resources that I use is Twitter, some websites, and YouTube. I listed some people that I follow on Twitter. Some of these are DeFi companies and Ethereum companies. Others are Ethereum smart contract engineers. And some of them are security engineers. I put a star on the ones that I highly recommend that you follow. For example, Samsung is a legendary security engineer, and I highly recommend that you follow him. Bantech and Andre Cronje, these are engineers from Yearn, and you'll also learn a lot just by following them and looking at their code. Some websites that I use to learn, ethereumstackexchange.com. This is where I will ask questions if I cannot find any answer on Google. Vitalik Buterin's blog, and sometimes I will visit Ethereum research just to keep up to date with Ethereum's latest research. Trail of Bits, they also have a good blog about security. Now I'm a visual learner, so most of my learning is done on YouTube. If you're starting out, I highly recommend that you follow DAP University. This will teach you the basics for smart contracts, Web3, front end, and back end. I also recommend that you follow Eat the Blocks. Julian from Eat the Blocks is an expert in DeFi, and he publishes a lot of the latest contents. You'll learn a lot from him, so definitely subscribe to his channel. If you want to understand how some of the DeFi protocols work, DeFi Weekly is a really great channel to learn about them. For basics about blockchain in general, Andreas Antonopoulos at A. Antonop, really great channel to follow. Some of these channels here are a mix of podcasts about Ethereum, DeFi, technical tutorials about software engineering, and also advice about software engineering career. So go ahead and take a look at these channels. Alright, so that was a roadmap for how to become a smart contract engineer in 2021. Any feedback or questions, comment below. Thanks for watching and good luck on your job hunting.